The Wyoming Range is really very personal to me because it's my home. We're surrounded by three different ranges here. Um, the winds to our north, the, to the west, the Wyoming Range, and then the tail end of the Grovant. We run a cow-calf operation. The ranch is comprised of approximately uh, about 6,000 acres in Daniel, Wyoming. I've been going up into the Wyoming Range since the early 80s. I camp up there, but mainly I do a lot of hunting in the fall. It's a very beautiful country. Good elk and deer hunting. I keep using this word, but solitude. It just uh, you can go for days in the area and, and never see uh, people. I've been going up there since I was about 10 years old. All three of my children have gone hunting up there. They caught their first fish. I've been uh, doing photography and been published since I was in high school. My new starting passion is fly fishing. Um, for my birthday I got waders and a nice pack rod, so combining those two next summer is going to be the, the highlight. I grew up in Cokeville, Wyoming. I grew up in the mountains. My dad runs sheep. Since I've been little I've been in the mountains and in the Wyoming range uh, with him and now, you know, with my own business. We literally walk, hike, uh, head out fishing, skiing, depending on the season and can climb straight up Myrna Butte. And it just represents for us our life as a family. I own Trophy Mountain Outfitters, which is located in the Wyoming Range. Um, our camp is in the Beaver Creek area, the Beaver Creek, uh, Myrna Horse Creek, uh, where a lot of the drilling is going to take place if it goes through. I was told that there's going to be four wells put in within a mile of my camp. There's a lot of uh, rolling timbered hills and then our camp sits at uh, 9,500 feet elevation. Probably I will be affected more uh, than anyone else. It's something that I'd never talked about until this year because I was unaware of what was, you know, possibly going to take place. I brought it up as we were sitting on the mountain eating our lunch and asked them what they thought if there uh, you know, it was an oil well sitting over there, or a road with, with water trucks, and most of them couldn't believe it. A lot of them didn't believe me that, that that area would even be considered for oil and gas drilling. Uh, one guy says, I can't believe that, that they're going to drill in God's country, and he's hunted all over the world and all over the United States, and, and he said, you know, that that's one of the pristine hunting areas that he's been in, not only hunting, but, but the scenic value of it. You know, he says, I've been in other places that the hunting's just as good as here, but this is one of the more scenic and just, you know, beautiful places. This is God's country. You know, if they're listening to an oil well pumping over the ridge, it's kind of going to take away from the, the experience. It'll pretty well, uh, my opinion, do, you know, be the end of my business. We're at the Double J Ranch. We're one of the medium-sized ranches here, so everyone's kind of, you know, a fair distance, distance away from each other. Between the forest boundary and the green, there are probably 20 uh, stakeholders that have, you know, some sort of water rights out of the Horse Creek. This has been ranched for an awful long time. We get about 80% of our water from the Horse Creek and about 20% of our water from the green. We've got about 450 acres of great hay ground, and it's all, um, and most of it's irrigated from the, uh, from the Horse Creek. So if anything ever happens to that water, and along with our neighbors up the road, it would ruin this ranch. We, we just couldn't run, run cattle on it. The Horse Creek is already a very temperamental uh, creek out of the Wyoming range. So we get a quick, fast, hard runoff, and all the neighbors cooperate on, on who and how everyone gets their water. So we've got a real short window to, to irrigate um, effectively and then, um, and then to cut. Oil and gas, Drilling is very, very water intensive. And that's one of the things that everyone's scared to death about is, is where does that water come from? You have to displace the gas that you're going to get out of the ground. So and that displacement is generally with water. It's already difficult in terms of runoff, you know, with more dirt, more silt, more things like that. We've, as I said, the Horse Creek runs hard and fast and, you know, we get a big silt buildup anyway. And if we all of a sudden start having roads in there and traffic and so forth. Everyone's scared to death about what's going to happen. The issues that we're dealing with really don't discriminate. Whether you have water degradation or air degradation or, or wildlife degradation, it doesn't matter whether you're here for three generations or whether you're here for a week. It, it affects everyone. I've heard it mentioned, well, Wyoming only has 500,000 people. Can't you convince them that we should drill in the Wyoming range? I think multiple use um, could be the signature phrase for the Wyoming Range, which is the, the bringing together um, of 
those neighbors that I, I feel that the Wyoming Range represents. It's not that well known. We've got the Wind River Range, which is very close to here, which is a little bit more well known. It's a beautiful place all different time, times of the, of the year. You know, during the winter, it's wonderful for snowmobiling. During the spring, it's, uh, it's a little challenge, but you can go backcountry skiing there. Summer, fall, or just incredible camping or, or pack trips or things like that. Then fall, obviously, um, hunting. The Wyoming Range is its own little gym. The continuity of stewardship has to be agriculture, community, the sportsmen groups, the conservation organizations. Multiple use to me means the opportunity for people to go up and use our national forest and our public lands for their enjoyment or for their business. It's a catch-22 to say that I support multiple use in the, in the national forest and then to say, but except for drilling. But I feel that drilling will have such a great impact on the other multiple use opportunities there that it's not worth it. If the drilling comes in, there's only going to be one and that's going to be drilling. The other ones are going to suffer greatly. I just don't think that all land is created equal. I think that we need to understand that certain land needs to be considered differently than others. Is Wyoming sacrificing enough? I think we are. I think we're sacrificing above and beyond. Do you sacrifice to the point where you, do you degrade the water? I mean, I want, I want to drink clean water. I want to breathe clean air. I want to be able to eat clean food. Do, I mean, do we go to the point to where we, we denigrate those things that we take for granted? Pinedale and Decline in the Jonah Field have, have substantially changed, um, changed Sublet County. Tourism contributes over $2 billion annually to the Wyoming economy, and Sublet County is on a major route to Yellowstone. 11% of the state sales tax collections are tourism related. Tourism is the number two industry in the state of Wyoming. And so the gas boom coming in, um, in one way, has bolstered the economy through, you know, as far as sales tax and lodging tax goes, but has decreased all of those, the, the revenues of the businesses who relied on tourists, who um, spend money in a different way than a gas field worker does. Some of the businesses have been able to adapt. One of my, my favorites is the, you know, the gift store that um, advertises guilt gifts for the guys to take back to their wives when they go home every two weeks. But that it's not the same as as having busloads of tourists stop by and shop in their store. If the things that would bring tourists to our area are damaged or destroyed by massive amounts of drilling, um, indiscriminate drilling, then um, the tourist won't come back. I've seen changes in it since I was a kid. When they go in and, and make that two-lane highway through there, which they did this year, and there's this huge rig next to this little beautiful mountain stream right in the middle of a valley that we used to go up and hunt. Well, within probably one mile or less of that rig over the years, myself and my other hunting party buddies have probably taken anywhere between eight and ten elk. But that's going to be changed forever. I mean, I, when they say that they can mitigate the damage, you know, I'm not so sure that we can. Wagon trains and horses came across the desert down here and 140 years ago and those tracks are still there. Community-wise, um, we've given up uh, aesthetics, we've given up wildlife, um, bird life, uh, air quality, water quality, and now, you know, when is enough enough? We're doing our fair share to contribute to the nation's um, need for oil and gas, and there needs to be a place that we set aside and that we protect, and that's the Wyoming Range. I think a lot of the um, support we're getting for the Wyoming Range stems from what's happened in the Jonah and the Anacline. And once oil and gas does start their drilling in different areas, they expand. They get uh, exceptions that they can continue drilling through the winter. And that's exactly what they said would not happen in the beginning. So it has a, a great effect on the wildlife. Our deer herds are 50% below the, the management numbers for the that the state set themselves. Just from what I see that goes on in the Jonah Field and the Pinedale Anacline, if that was to come into the Wyoming range, it is going to have a drastic effect on the other traditional uses. The original sites were 40 acre and now they've infilled. They're talking five acres now. 
uh, that, 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 that environment cannot sustain that. I've talked to several ranchers that have uh, grazing rights up there and they want to keep it the way it is. I don't know how much of an effect it will have on them. It will have some on their businesses up there if they do go to developing. Um, but probably not as much as the sportsmen, uh, the outfitters, the people go up there to recreate snowmobile. It's going to have an effect on everybody, but everybody's just really coming together. And that's where the, the genesis of this whole thing is public awareness, bringing all these groups together, letting everybody know what's at stake. Our whole uh, idea behind the Blue Green is to get more people involved in, in listening and understanding that your voice is important and sometimes people don't speak up until it's too late and things are gone. Yeah, one of the interesting things is the different uh, groups and the diversity of groups that came together to protect the Wyoming Range. Um, you know, you have your sportsmen, your outfitters, a lot of the ranchers have really stepped forward. Um, and then, you know, the, the environmental groups, which uh, has really changed my opinion on what an environmental group is or a conservation group, because um, I consider, you know, myself uh, an extreme environmentalist. Um, you know, I want to protect um, our mountain ranges, you know, keep our water clean keep our air clean, um, and just protect what we have. The use that's going on now um, is going to suffer so dramatically, and once they're gone, the, the, our use will never come back. Our slogan for our group is enough is enough, and that's sort of what we look at. The Sublet County has given up an awful lot with the, the Jonah Field and the Anacline. Responsible drilling is making sure that you're drilling in the right place at the right pace. It's not about slowing it down in the Wyoming Range. I think that any existing leases there, any, any ones that are, are still pending, etc., should absolutely be just be stopped. I believe the ultimate solution would be a legislation to protect it from development. The greater majority of it's federal land. So it's going to take federal legislation to really, really get this done. And it's, there's a groundswell coming. I am overwhelmed by the diversity of support on this issue because I never thought it would be this way. People need to work together and I think that's the way this issue will come to a, a successful conclusion. This is a worthy cause. It's a worthy enough cause that I feel that I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and come out and publicly you know express my opinion. If you look in the obituaries anybody that dies in this state especially the men you look in the obituaries it says enjoy doing camping, hunting, fishing, and being in the outdoors. That's what people in Wyoming do, and that's why we live here. America the Beautiful, they sing about it all the time. What is it, what are, are we gonna change the songs now to America the, the Derrick sites? I think that there are appropriate places for drilling, and a lot of them have already been impacted, and um, I hope that they can mitigate some of those impacts, but I think that there are some special places that should not be drilled and should not be explored. Um, and the Wyoming Range would be one of those. I want to have some clean water to drink. I want to have clean air to breathe. And I want to have my hunting and fishing opportunities. And I want my children, much like Dustin, to, to grow up in the Wyoming at least as close as possible to the Wyoming I grew up in. And I've got grandchildren, and I'd like to see them have that opportunity too. We need every voice. We need every person that's, that's involved to, to get more active. So a place like the Wyoming Range is too special to, to lose.